What? And good morning to those who are joining us online. We hope it's a, the weather is as wonderful where you are as it is in Jamaica. <laughs> if not, um, our services will certainly warm you up this morning. So welcome everyone. So please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. So we know there is only one. God, the living Spirit Almighty. And we know this one expresses through each and every one. Indeed, the life of all is God. So in this consciousness, we know that all lives matter because it's all God in glorious expression. So today I know that our speaker this morning, Reverend John, is a clear and open channel for the expression of this one. So I know he brings us an encouragement that lifts us into a higher awareness of who we are. Perfect God in perfect expression. And I know that all activities in this service are the expression of a perfect idea in the mind of this one. So I know that everything flows in perfect divine order today. And everyone who participates is blessed and is a blessing to everyone they meet. Indeed, the entire cosmos is blessed this morning. So I give thanks, I give thanks, and I release these words, knowing that all this is so, and so it is. Our inspirational reading this morning is from our Sands of Mind magazine, it's a reading for today, and it's titled Connection. And the epigraph says, From moment of stillness, the most skillful way to love and serve becomes clear. By stopping to listen, we connect with one another, and true community is, for, is born. And that is from Jack Cornfield. And from... Ernest Holmes, and from the textbook, one of the first things to do is to love everybody. Mm -hmm. If you have not done this, begin to do it at once. People are dying for real human interest, for genuine friendship, for someone to tell them they are all right. We always welcome the man who looks at the world as his friend and loves it. There is something compelling about feeling like you belong. There is a yearning to feel connected, to be a part, to be a part of something. Connection is vital to our well-being. Yet, as we look out in the world or listen to the news, we see division. 
pain and heartache. Back of all this is a sense of separation. The time has come for a healing shift and it must begin with each of us. It is easy to connect with others who share a similar worldview, culture, or social status. How comfortable am I connecting with someone completely different? <laughs> I participated in an exercise where we were asked to look around the room of the room of hundreds of people and choose someone who we would not usually connect with. We were each given eight minutes to share our life story. It was amazing to see how much we had in common. And most of all, how connected I felt with this person. That sense of deep connection remains today. Many years later, when I, what I learned is that when we take time to get to know someone, we change our perception. These are inspiration, interpersonal connections. Sorry, these interpersonal connections bring richness to life. People are hungry for this connection. Today, Today is, is a good day, day to reach out to someone, someone and need, and need time, time to connect. To connect. Human, human to human, heart to heart, we feel a sense of love and oneness. Love is calling. Love is the highest purpose of life on planet Earth. And the affirmation for today is, I see myself as a presence of love and my life is enriched by the sense of connection I feel with all. I want us just to repeat that affirmation. I'll read it down. I'll break it down for you. I see myself as a presence of love. I see myself as a presence of love. And my life is enriched by the sense of connection. And my life is enriched by the sense of connection. I feel with all. I feel with all. With all. And so it is. And so it is. I'm going to ask you all to stand now for our praise song. Awesome in this place. just ask you to remain standing for the prayer of our center. 
The Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ, peace, and love emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfolding and attainment. We are blessed. And to God be the honor and the glory. <coughs> and so it is. And now I'm going to light the youth candle. And just repeat with me the youth blessing. We love you. We appreciate you. We salute the Christ in you. And we see you as shining lights onto your world. God is blessing you now. And so it is. We now have our mission song. The temple of light. The temple of light. The temple of life. We are a people with a vision, one in spirit, on a mission to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us, any time, night or day. The temple of light, the temple of light, the temple of light. We are people with a vision, one in spirit, on a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate. Anyone who comes into contact with us, it's now time for our announcements. Our flowers this week are a gift from our flower angels as well as Miss Carol Charlton who is marking the birthdays of her late mother, Gwendolyn, and sister, Alicia. <laughs> they were lovingly arranged by Glynis Young, and I think you will agree, they are beautiful. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> you are invited to spend a few quiet moments in the garden with Reverend John every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. And please join us again on Facebook Live for our Spiritual Mind Healing Service on Tuesday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. This week, our speaker will be practitioner Steve Golden. Sharing in the garden, join Mrs. Jean Barnes, this Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for sharing in the meditation garden. This is a face-to-face -face complimentary class discussing how we can apply signs of mind principles to everyday living. Prayer power on Thursdays from 6 to 7 p.m. You can enjoy an hour of fellowship at prayer power. 
a circle of prayer whose purpose is to facilitate spiritual growth. Anyone is free to participate and experience the benefits of spontaneous prayer. Prayer Power utilizes Zoom, so you need to let us know so we can send you the link. Classes. Make sense of mind classes, your spiritual enrichment for 2021. Reverend John Scott invites you to join him for spiritual economics. Based on Eric Butterworth's classic book, Classes are offered on Zoom on Tuesday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and face-to-face -face on Thursday mornings at Temple of Light from 11 to 1 p.m. If you are desirous of attending classes online, you must register by Monday of each week. Classes for non-residents of Jamaica cost U.S. $16 for non-members and $10 for members. For Jamaican resident, classes cost $1,600 for non-members and $1,200 for members. To sign up for classes, simply type in your web browser classes templeoflightcsl.org and it will take you to information on classes as well as payment options. Of course, if you are in Jamaica, you can pay at our office or transfer funds to our savings accounts number 20941 at Bank of Nova Scotia, Knoxford Boulevard. Young Adults Workshop. Now, here is some good news for young adults. Beginning next Sunday, February 28th, we'll be offering a monthly face-to-face -face workshop observing all of the required protocols. Parents bringing young adults are reminded to call the office to let us know you will be in church. Now, services at the temple. Similarly, everyone attending services need to call our office at 876-946-2230 to let us know. As you know, everyone must wear a face mask and observe the prescribed protocols. Please also remember to remain physical distancing and to leave the premises as quickly as possible after the service. If you can't bless us with your presence on a Sunday, you can still be with us in consciousness as our service continue to be live streamed on Facebook Live. To make contributions in support of our ministry, visit donate.templeoflightcsl.org. If you are worshiping with us in person, there is a basket on either side of the podium in which you can place your offerings as you exit the sanctuary. Lifeline, our monthly webinar titled Lifeline airs on Facebook Live on Thursday, February 25th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our guest speaker this month is a dynamic center for spiritual living youth leader named Jeffon Seely, along with Reverend John Scott and, moderate, and moderator practitioner Sandra Cooper. Jeffon will speak on the way to love. Also, on YouTube and also on our Facebook page, there is a, an upload of the musical item presented at Centers for Spiritual Living Vista 2021, and it was a big hit. That's what Reverend John told us. So you can look at it for yourself on YouTube or on our Facebook page. And please, those of you who are new to our YouTube site, please remember to click subscribe so that you can help to us to build up our subscriber base.
No, Ministry of Environment newsletter. Our congregation goes out to our Ministry of the Environment, who recently launched a monthly mini publication featuring observations, experiences, initiatives, and advice on matters related to the physical and aesthetic environment within and without the temple, sanctuary, and further afield. This electronic publication will be posted on our Facebook page every month. Well done, Ministry of the Environment. <laughs> prayer support. We continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time. A practitioner will be available to pray with you during a 15-minute period immediately following our service every Sunday. The practitioner on duty today is practitioner Jennifer Livingston, and the number is 876-289-0907. You can listen to an inspiring prayer by calling our prayer line, 876-978-1167. And if you wish to speak in person with one of our ministers, they may be reached at 876-289-0907 from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight, Mondays to Fridays. You can also phone in your prayer request into our office at 876-927-6145 or 876-946-2230. Or you can email us at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com. Now, today we now say goodbye. We said goodbye last week to one of our own Temple of Light stalwarts, Carmel G Jerry Gage Leslie. Our celebration of life will be held on March 10th. Let us surround our daughter Dawn the and the entire family with love and prayers. And there ends our announcements. Please, please join me in singing our first hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And it's on page two in your program. And on, and the, on screen, the screen, for those, for those on, on, on the face, face, face of some stream. This is this is done.
with tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out of the gloomy past. Till now we stand at last where the white gleam of a bright star is cast. God of our weary ears, God of our silent tears, Thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, Thou who hast by Thy blood led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Last your feet stray from the places or God where we met thee. Last your hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadowed be Thanks, everyone. You really sounded wonderful. <laughs> you, uh, you may be seated. And now it is indeed my pleasure to welcome my mentor, one who is true to our God and to our native land, our spiritual leader who is taking us in a, in an ever-expanded journey of, exp of expression, an ever-expanding unfoldment of this temple of light. And you'll hear more about that as time goes on. Our spiritual leader, the beloved Reverend John Scott, Wow, that's some introduction. Thank you, Vance, and good morning, worldwide spiritual family. Joy to add my own words of welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, as I always say, in beautiful Jamaica. And that song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, just opens my heart. You know, it, it just makes me so aware of how far we have come. And so I wanted to speak a little bit about that path that we have walked and for the hope and the beauty and the joy that people of color, of color have always brought to the human experience. Just a little bit of history. In the year 730 BCE, before the Common Era, Paye, the king of Cush, decided that the only way to save Egypt from itself was to invade and conquer it. According to the National Geographic magazine, who in 2008 had an article on the, the history of the Nubians to mark Black History Month, this Paya did. He conquered Egypt, thus becoming the first of a series of Nubian kings who ruled over all Egypt as the country's 25th dynasty. Through inscriptions on stelae by both Nubians and their enemies, it is possible to map out those rulers' vast footsteps through the sands of time. The black pharaohs reunited a tattered Egypt which had been torn apart by petty warlords warring among themselves, and they filled its landscape 
with glorious monuments, creating an empire that stretched from the southern border at present-day Khartoum all the way north to the Mediterranean Sea. They stood up to the bloody and bloodthirsty Assyrians and perhaps saved Jerusalem in the process. According to National Geographic magazine, the ancient world, and listen to this, was devoid of racism. I quote, at the time of Paye's historic conquest, the fact that his skin was dark was irrelevant. Artwork from ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome shows a clear awareness of racial features and skin tone, but there is little evidence that darker skin was seen as a sign of inferiority. Only after the European powers colonized Africa in the 19th century did Western scholars pay attention to the color of the Nubian skin to uncharitable effect. End of that quote. It is remarkable, my friends, that there, was a, that there has been a chapter of history that largely went untold. And that, as the Geographic magazine puts it, and I quote, only in the past four decades have archaeologists resurrected their story and come to recognize that the black pharaohs didn't appear out of nowhere. They sprung from a robust African civilization that had flourished on the southern banks of the Nile for 2,500 years, going back as far as the first Egyptian dynasty. Talk about black history. Black History Month always brings back a memory from my early childhood. You see, I attended what in those days was called an elementary school here in Kingston. I think they're called primary schools now. I attended Providence Elementary School, where for the most part, my classmates came from lower income families. And then I was going to go to high school. So the night before my first day at one of Jamaica's prestigious high schools, my father, who we called Big John, whose marriage to my mother, Daisy, had been vigorously opposed by her mother, because he was, of course, too dark. Um, he stood me before the mirror and asked, what do you see, son? I see me, of course, was my saucy answer. But who is the me that you see, he persisted. I was, as usual, anxious to go do whatever in the, you know, with my friends across the, across in the neighborhood. And so I silently hoped that this wasn't going to be one of those lengthy philosophical meanderings with heavy sprinklings of poetry, which he was wont to, to put my brother Dennis and myself through. And so rolling my eyes heavenwards, I said, oh, come on, Dad, you tell me. As if reading my thoughts, Daddy said, no, this is not going to be a lecture, Jay. However, tomorrow is your first day at Jamaica College, where you will meet and make friends with many boys of many different nationalities, and some of them are from very wealthy families. So I want you to remember who you are, where you come from, and what your heritage is. Oh God, I thought I have the weirdest parents. This is so embarrassing. Anyway, I just buckled my lip and said, you know, I'll get through this. And then he proceeded to tell me that, you know, the heritage is so rich that our ancestors built the pyramids and made the world's first university. I thought, yeah, right, good. And, you know, your point is kind of thing. But, you know, friends, I wasn't at my new prestigious school more than a week before some of my cohorts began boasting about their family trees and whose father was the chairman of which corporation. One of my newfound friends even wore a ring with his family coat of arms. Me to think is only, is only nations and countries have coat of arms. Well, his family had a coat of arms which he wore. But as impressed as I was, 
I also had a sense of myself being valid and valuable. So much so that when the son of a prominent Jewish family boasted truthfully about the synagogue here in Kingston being the oldest in this hemisphere and said that his ancestors, ancestors who came from Portuguese, there were Portuguese Jews, I think, fleeing uh, persecution, and he said they helped to build the synagogue. I just could, you know, have a little smug look on my face and say, that's nothing. My ancestors built the pyramids and had the world's first university and indeed the, the world's first library. So if you think you're bad, see it there. Yeah. I really just had that strong sense of self. Listen to this paragraph from the geographic article. I quote, today, Sudan's pyramids, greater in number than all of Egypt's, are haunting spectacles in the Nubian desert. It is possible to wander among them unharassed, even alone, a world away from Sudan's genocide or the aftermath of civil war. You know, my friends, I really believe it is pointless to agonize about how and when we as a people, people of color, lost our sense of identity and began to believe and then demonstrate the lie that we are somehow inferior or that any race or category of person is better than, less than, or more than another. In similar vein, it serves no purpose to try and figure out when the human race began to embrace the idea of duality. Suffice to say that countless people of every race and creed and culture have subscribed to this erroneous premise. And as we know, genocide and systemic racism has been the result. When did we get there? You know, how did we come from building pyramids and um, a civilization that, that was the top, the pinnacle of world and human endeavor? to being made to feel less than and inferior? When did, we have to, when did we learn to start bleaching our faces so that we'd be lighter and therefore in our consciousness more beautiful? Well, thank God. Thank God for the teaching known as the science of mind that teaches that every event in our human experience is governed by law and order. And my friends, if this were otherwise, the universe would be a chaos and not a cosmos. And as it says in our Declaration of Principles, we really believe that the ultimate goal of all life will be a complete emancipation from all discord of every nature. And that this goal, this goal of human humanity is sure to be attained by all. Author W.I. Barth, in an article from Science of Mind magazine of February 1986, writes, and I quote, the universe of which our whole life is an essential part is penetrated through and through with logic and reason. So that in all its mighty fabric, not even the slenderest tissue or thread ever gets caught on the torn or torn on any jagged edge of chance. There are no, there are no mishaps, there's no, there, there is no chance, there's a carefully choreographed, choreographed designed, designed, and exquisitely, exquisitely beautiful, beautiful universe. You're the meaning one in one, you know. You universe. universe. And, we are, and we are all part of it. And so Bart, and so Bart says, and I quote, our Earth, Earth with its, with its infinite, infinite variety of phenomena, is not formless chaos or the plaything of capricious forces, but is bound as if by golden chains into a unified whole by law. Here in the science of mind, we study the law and how to use it. 
The Nubian builders of the Great Pyramids were using laws of geometry and mathematics which we still haven't even figured out completely. And yet, we persist, the human race, in mistakenly limiting the laws of the universe to our present partial understanding, trying in vain to interpret every experience of life in the context of the laws we do know, and rejecting all else as somehow unscientific. No wonder St. Paul said, for now, we see through a glass darkly. We really haven't seen the full glory of the coming of the Lord, which is also can be interpreted as the coming of the law into fruition. But as religious scientists, we know that in addition to our known natural laws, there are spiritual laws which I believe, when they are more fully understood, will be found to be superbly natural rather than supernatural, because they do not contravene the integrity or the order of the universe. It is this deep understanding of and insight into the principles of these higher laws that enabled Jesus the Christ to perform the so-called miracles of his ministry. The master teacher clearly indicated to his followers the existence of laws which they could use and assured them that they could do the same and even greater works will ye do if ye believe. People say that we do not worship Jesus, and they are right. Nowhere does he say that we should, we should do so. But we believe that his gospel was to all mankind and applicable to all times, ages, and cultures. And this is why we can affirm in our Declaration of Principles that we believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe, because Jesus said, if only you believe you can do what I am doing and even greater works. Edward Gibbon, the 18th century English historian who wrote the book, The History of, and, of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, asserts that for 300 years, the followers of Jesus' teaching healed the sick and did other mighty works by their faith in the higher laws made known to them in their Gospels. But that as Christianity became more rich and worldly, the knowledge of these higher laws was lost. As we know, modern science and quantum physics are now proving the soundness of these early teachings, which were not just unique to Christianity. We didn't have a, have a, a hold on it. All religions, the scriptures of every religious faith, are luminous with examples of the workings of spiritual laws and principles, so that now, a days, once again, modern science is corroborating that which for untold ages faith has taught. And perhaps our Nubian ancestors knew these laws because those, those monuments that they, they have built that have endured so many thousands of years had to have been based on laws that we are just, we haven't even begun to, to figure out in their entirety. So the firm faith which we hold here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is that an infinite intelligence, love, and personalness undergirds, pervades, and supports all that is. All life, and that includes each one of us, is a living demonstration and disclosure of the divinity that underlies the indwelling and divinity of all creatures and all creation. Nature's laws are God's laws, and like their creator, are infinite in depth and meaning. At the secondary school, which I, I mentioned earlier, 
we were made to learn little maxims or aphorisms which were called memory gems. How many people remember memory gems? We made to, little recitations that, that reminded us of the truths of life. You know, and I really bless my dad for teaching me that our ancestors were people who have been at the very pinnacle of human endeavor and evolution. And so, I wonder if they're still teaching memory gems. I'm not sure. But you know, the one that sticks with me and that I have, upon which I have based your assignment today, and you know, regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know that I always give an assignment. Your assignment today is based on a memory gem that goes like this. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. And so your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, my friends, is to choose an airmark, an area of your life that you really want to improve. It may already be good, but you want to make it better. Or you want to make it really the very best that you can be. I want you to choose an area, just one. You know, we, there are lots of things we want to improve, but I want you just for purposes of this assignment, just to choose one area that you want to excel in. And your assignment is to get hold of one of our practitioners or, or our ministers and ask them to work with you in this area diligently for the, the remainder of Lent, right up to the Easter weekend. Just to work with you at becoming and evolving spiritually and physically and emotionally and work-wise in every domain of your life and any domain that you have chosen to be not just good but better and in fact, to aim at being your best as you embrace your evolving spirituality. So let us affirm together, good, better, best, I will not let it rest until my good is better and my better best. Together, good, better, best, I will not let it rest until my good is better and my better best. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching, said, and I quote, a religious science church is a place where only two things happen. People are taught about a divine presence and a universal law of good, which reacts to it, and people are taught how to use that law. And he says, that's all. We have nothing else to sell. And I want to say to the memory of Ernest Holmes, we think this is so powerful that we don't even want to sell it. We want to give it away. We think this teaching is the answer to all of the challenges and the problems that the world is facing. And we are about the business of making that which is already good because we have a good teaching and a good center in the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and we are peopled by a community of good people. And we are working assiduously to make that good better until that better becomes the very best of human endeavor all across the globe. Holmes further says, and I quote, a religious scientist is humble before the greatness of things, but is not afraid of the greatness of things. For our future is a matter of, and listen to this, here is the future. One person comes to know what God is. That is, comes to know what God is through our teaching. Then two. Then three then a hundred, and then I want to continue and say then hundreds and thousands of people striving to be their very best in every domain and every area of human experience. 
My friends, our church is more than the building and the beautiful grounds. Our church is a state of consciousness. The consciousness of peace. The consciousness of abundance. The consciousness of love. The consciousness of service. All equaling the consciousness of unity, which is transforming not only Jamaica, but the entire world. And I've come this morning to tell you that each of you, right where you are in your own evolution and your own development, has an important role to play. The time has come to support that which we have been saying we believe by putting our love of truth and of our center into action, thereby raising the consciousness of all with whom we come into contact. Like our Nubian ancestors, we are building a lasting monument to human goodness and unity, which glorifies God. What we have to give the world is good. As a spiritual community of kindred change agents, we are working together to make it even better, and we will not rest until love of each other and of our fellow humans lifts us into the highest and best of our spiritual promise. The goal, my friends, is sure to be attained by all. And you know, our innovative teams coming out of our last year's summit are working assiduously to make all good better and our better best. And you are part of that movement. You are part of that, that exciting, I want to call it thrust, towards greatness, the greatness that is represented in the breathtaking beauty of the monuments built by our Nubian ancestors. The beauty of the fact, as my father shared with me the first, the day just before I went into high school, the glory and the greatness of the heritage that is ours, that has been bequeathed to us. And we are, each of us, stewards and custodians of that great promise and it's going to happen because we rely on one thing only, and that is God. God and God alone. I am indeed humble before the greatness of this mission, and I want to thank each of you for being a part of it. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, please help me welcome Rhonda Lumsden Lou to remind us that it is God and God alone. And 
And all the best and worst of man Won't change the master's plan It's God's and God's alone God and God alone Is fit to take our universe's throne Let everything that lives reside its truest praise for God and God alone. God and God alone will be the God and God alone, God and God alone is fit to take our universe's throne. Let everything that lives reserve its truest God and God alone could create that beauty and that voice. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Angela. And thank you all for the consciousness with which you received that beautiful rendition of that absolutely wonderful song. Please stand with me and in that consciousness, speak the prayer of Jamaica found on the flyer in your program and on the screen. Together, the radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island, Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. 
and so it is. And please remain standing to sing our second hymn, The New Age Vision, on page three of your program and again on the screen. Mine eyes have seen the coming of an age that is to be, when from every limitation shall the Son of Man be free. For the age is rich in fairness, and my soul has to see God's truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. seen the coming of, of a race from sorrow free in an age of faith and, and justice, truth and, and love and, and liberty. And I sing of love's great triumph in that year of jubilee. God's truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. My soul has seen the glory of a great reality, for it sees the ever-present Christ within both you and me. And I know that God's great kingdom is and shall forever be. God's truth is marching on. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching on. In that consciousness of the glory of the truth forever and ever expanding, will you take your love offerings in your hand? And if you're at home and about to press the donate button, put your hand on your heart to bless the gift of yourself. As we say together, lovingly, I give. Joyfully, I receive. Be thou fruitful. Increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father, Mother of the universe. And so it is in this consciousness, feeling the glory streaming from our heart center to fill this sanctuary, to fill this island beyond our shores, to fill the entire cosmos as the waters fill the sea. We go determined to make our good better and our better best, to let this teaching touch and heal and bless and prosper and love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact, to the honor and glory of God. We bless the gifts of talent, the treasure of money substance, the treasure of consciousness, and all the good that is represented in this spiritual community, and allow it to do its perfect work of healing and balance and harmonizing confident that the goal is sure to be attained because we rely on God and God alone. This is the truth which I release to law and stand in awe at the majesty, beauty, and might of the divine power and presence that expresses in all our lives, in all our homes, in every village and city and township and country across the globe to the honor and glory of God. I truly give thanks that this is so, and so it is. And let us sing, Yes, There is Peace. Yes, there is peace on earth, 
and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as our power. Perfect harmony. Yes, peace begins with me. Yes, this is the moment now. With every step I take, yes, this is my joyous vow, my vow to take each moment and live. My friends, thank you for being a part of this amazing consciousness this movement of love and light and truth. Join me in the garden tomorrow morning at 6, and join us on Tuesday evening on Facebook Live at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on th Thursday at 6 p.m. for our Lifeline webinar, and then again come back to celebrate all that we are and all that we are doing in a world that is hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Thank you all for being. Namaste.